welcome to uh, the Cornwall Chamber of Commerce uh, podcast. Uh, today, uh, we've got in the room uh, Richard Jackson, who's uh, come uh, a long way to uh, see us today. Um, we're going to be asking some questions about international trade, you know, to Thailand. So, you know, Cornwall Chamber of Commerce uh, is an issuing body appointed by the HM government uh, as uh, to certify export documentation, including UK certificates of origin. Also, we are in partnership with Devon and Plymouth Chamber of Commerce. We offer customs declaration services for UK importers and exporters. So, uh, welcome today, um, Richard. Uh, it's great to uh, meet you. You know, it's the first time we've met, and uh, thank you for travelling down here to this uh, beautiful part of the country. Pleasure to be here. Cornwall. Uh, we've had some fantastic weather, and uh, hopefully you've uh, been enjoying it. Uh, so, I thought... Uh, I'll just talk a little bit about, uh, well, Richard's journey, really. So, you know, where did your journey start? You know, where did he start? Where are you now? And where do you think you'll be in the, in the next five years' time, Richard? Yeah, so I'm currently based in Bangkok. Um, been in Thailand for about 12 years now. And so very passionate and excited about uh, that part of the world. Um, and obviously seeing the amount of opportunities here there. Um, I originally moved there as a, a sort of... Uh, combination of factors i'd say the the global financial crisis had badly affected my business in the uk um and i think initially it was probably a bit of a lifestyle choice right. Right? when people think of thailand it's elephants and flip-flops and uh, you know beer sings <laughs> yeah. and things like that yeah. so uh you know there was a bit of that um and having got there i think and, and seen it on the ground um what i was doing maybe wasn't the right thing for me at the time but i knew there was a lot of opportunity there um and yeah. so if you could find the right thing to do I knew that that you could be successful there. Yeah. So, so where are you right now then with uh, with, with Thailand? What is your you know what, what are the connections there right now? Sure. So, um, as I said, I've been there twelve years, but yep. for the last ten years, I've I've pretty much been doing the same thing. I, I work in the recruitment industry, yeah. um, and uh, the company that I started to work with then, uh, I'm now the owner and the managing director of. Right. Um, so, my company is RLC. Yep. We specialize in uh, recruitment, especially for international and uh, multinational companies, for local staff, for manufacturing, supply chain engineering. Uh, we also have an outsourcing business and recently we've been very excited to launch a business that helps companies to uh, digitize and yeah. create smart people solutions for their businesses um, so it's been a very interesting journey lots of ups lots of downs <laughs> um, you know there's no, no such thing as a steady road in Thailand nope. um, but yeah I'm, I'm kind of evangelical about uh, the opportunities there and uh, I'm blessed enough that for the last five years I've actually been the co-chair of the HR committee for the American Chamber of Commerce in Thailand so um, I know just what a great job the chambers do to support yeah. businesses uh, and really anyone that's n out there listening to this that's not taking full advantage of the services that the chambers offer, I, I urge you to get in touch with them. Oh, thank you for that. That's great. I mean, because uh, we have got an international trade executive, you know, based at our offices there. And uh, we've had uh, an increase, obviously, since Brexit and the transition and uh, people struggling with paperwork. And, uh, you know, we've got a guy there who can help and support, you know, all those businesses out there who want to export and import, not only to Thailand, but, you know, across Europe and across the world. So fantastic. So, uh, you know, why did you start a business in Thailand? Why? Yeah. Um, I mean, initially, as I said, it was sort of a lifestyle uh, decision, but having got there, um, Thailand uh, has really stepped its game up in the last 25 years. Um, there's big brands there manufacturing. So companies such as Triumph Motorbikes, uh, for instance, has three factories there. They've been there wow. for over 20 years. So if anyone's driving around on a, uh, or so riding around on a, on a Triumph Motorbike, I get yeah. in trouble for that. Um, <laughs> then th th there's likely some part of that bike or an even the whole thing was was manufactured in Thailand. Um, so th there's that's just one example of a company that's really embraced uh, the, uh, you know, the, the, the globalization of, of supply chains. Um, especially in uh, manufacturing sectors, digital sectors, and I can go into those in, in more depth, there yeah. is a, a wealth of opportunity and support from the government. Um, so there's lots of opportunities there. Um, and uh, I'd say it just brought the pleasure back to, to doing business as well. You know, we, we forget sometimes that we get into this because uh, it's enjoyable. Yeah. It's enjoyable. Um, and I, I would say that, you know, comparing and contrasting, I found doing business in a pioneering frontier type economy, a developing economy, um, it, it, very satisfying. 
Oh yeah, I can I can imagine, and uh, it's, it will be quite interesting as well. I mean, you know, when I joined the chamber three years ago, I didn't think I'll, I'll be talking about international trade. You know, <laughs> you know, you know, three years down the line. So, you know, what are the uh, attractions for UK companies looking at Southeast Asia and Thailand as potential markets? Sure. So, uh, I mean, there is a lot of business going on already, as I mentioned. Um, I mean, Thailand's currently the UK's 37th largest trading partner, um, nearly five billion pounds worth of business uh, annually. Um, and, uh, you know, there's, uh, th there's a lot, there's a, there's a well-established infrastructure. Um, it's 21st of a lot of countries in terms of ease of business. Um, and there's, uh, like I said, there's a wide range of things that, that the Thailand market now wants from the UK. Yeah. Um, the uh, the opportunity I think post Brexit as well is very interesting. Um, a lot of companies that were used to using uh, you know the other EU businesses yeah. to export to, um, there, there's now going to be additional barriers. So why not look further afield? Yeah. Um, whether you're manufacturing or looking to you know reduce the fragility of your supply chain, or whether you're just looking for a new market with demand for your products, yeah. uh, I think there's a lot of um, you know options. There. I mean. Just to compare ourselves to, to our German friends, um, Thailand's <laughs> currently importing about three times more uh, products and services from Germany than it is from the wow. UK. So you can start to see there's a lot yeah. of opportunity that we might not be taking advantage of there. Yeah, and I think, you know, if, you know, looking at Cornwall, just as, you know, not, not looking at the country, but looking at Cornwall, we've got so many products and services here, which I am sure, you know, we could get to, you know, into Thailand. I mean, I, I don't know if you've heard of a company called Flexihex, for example. They've, in, you know, uh, come up uh, with uh, a biodegradable cardboard, which uh, surrounds any product, you know, you know, so to get that over there to Thailand, you know, people, companies like ISO Spaces who are building these apartments and, you know, shop units from, you know, from sh shipping containers, you know. So, you know, these are the sort of companies here in Cornwall, which, which should be, you know, dealing with Thailand and, and having you here today, which is a, <laughs> a great way of uh, introducing them to, to Thailand. No, that's great. I mean, absolutely anything, sustainability is a huge factor in Thailand. We, we have only just made bag, plastic bags, uh, you know, yeah. Uh, illegal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, the, there's a big initiative for sustainability, but we don't necessarily have the know-how or technology there. So yeah. huge space. Oh, fantastic. And that's, you know, it's good to know. And uh, like I said, you know, any Cornwall businesses out there looking to export or import, you know, to, uh, you know, from Thailand or into Thailand, you know, should really listen to this podcast and get in touch with Richard. Mm -hmm. So Richard, uh, you know, what is the perception of British goods and services in Thailand at the moment? Um, British goods are very well received. Um, the the Union Jack itself is a is a trademark of, of quality. Um, it does come with a premium price tag usually. So there's a bit of perception of that. Um, but uh, Thailand has uh, has got a long established British expat community. Uh, the the business relationships are generally seen as very transparent, very trustworthy, very secure, um, and these are all really important in doing business in Asia. Obviously, yeah, yeah. Um, also, I, I find that the British communities are are leading when it comes to things like charitable contributions, sustainable yeah. community initiatives. Um, so there is a lot of giving back um, as well. And, and being in a, a Buddhist environment, this is really key to, to sort of winning the hearts and minds of the, uh, of the local businesses and communities that you want to work with. Well, that's good to know as well, because, you know, since, you know, since Brexit and the transition and like I say, you know, you know, companies looking to export to, you know, further afield, you know, having you today, Richard, is, is fantastic news for, you know, for Cornwall. And uh, I'm sure, you know, the Cornwall business community here, when they listen to this podcast, hopefully, you know, pick up the phone and uh, start calling <laughs> you and saying, look, you know, what can we do ourselves here? You know, but, uh, you know, we're, we're, we're trying to be leaders, not followers here in Cornwall. And mm. I think that's happening, you know, in the 30 years I've been here in Cornwall, we've moved on so much uh, in, in those years, you know, connectivity, you know, our productivity, they're all going in the right direction. So, you know, it's fantastic to, to have you, you today, you, Richard. One thing I would say is if you guys can get a Premier League football team, <laughs> that would really help. Uh, yeah, or, no. or just make something with Manchester United or Liverpool on it. Yeah. Uh, that, then you, you, the door is open. Well, I was at, I was at Plymouth Argyle on Friday and their, and, uh, their uh, motivation is to be Premier League winners one day. You know, so you never know, you know, one day Plymouth Girl might be Premier, Go Premier for winners, it. you know, Go so for it. we'll see what happens. Watch <laughs> this space. So, uh, you know, um, so what types of business and industries uh, is the Thailand market open for? Uh, I, I mean, I won't list the whole no. damn bit. Um, we'll be here all day, but... Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, predominantly, I'd say automotive um, is, right. is is right up there. The, a lot of people don't know Thailand, the 10th biggest automotive manufacturing market in the world. So, uh, you know, the, the UK is 14th. 
So sorry if that's a sore nerve with anybody <laughs> out there, but uh, yeah, it's it's set for growth. The government throws incentives. Um, there's over a decade worth of tax advantages, as in, you know, maybe even 0% corporation tax, um, you know, limits to personal taxation, ease of visas for, for these industries when the government wants to support it. Yeah. Um, they're looking to push to be a huge hub for electric vehicles. Um, so you've Brilliant. got uh, a lot of the Japanese OEMs are over there, Mercedes-Benz, BMW, these are now manufacturing hubs, Ford, it's the ASEAN headquarters uh, for manufacturing there. So yeah, it, it, is, a, it is a real happening place. Um, electronics is huge, uh, 41 billion pounds of exports last year, uh, just from, from Thailand. And um, the, that industry itself is, is a component manufacturer to support global supply chains. Um, logistics, supply chain, very big industry in the UK. Yep. Um, any providers of anything from palletizing to containers to, you know, tra transport. Yeah, absolutely brilliant market. Um, and going up, e-commerce, tech, uh, you know, and lots of incentives for uh, tech uh, startups as well. Yep. Easy visas, um, you know, tax breaks, that sort of thing. Um, and uh, the, the, the infrastructure for technology is there for the business as well. Um, you can go to the most remote village in Thailand and they will have 4G, okay? <laughs> I, I sometimes struggle to get that in London. <laughs> so, yeah. Yeah, I understand that as well. Just, you know, driving through Chase Water, I just lose all signal, you know, uh, going, you know <laughs> going, going to work. So, yeah, you know, it's uh, great to see, you know, villages there, there in Thailand with uh, good 4G. Mm. So, yeah, fantastic. So, uh, you know, what lessons have you learned about doing business in Thailand and what would you do differently? Yeah, good question. Um, I'd still go there. That's, that's, <laughs> the, that's, that, that's the first point, I guess. Um, I, I think... The, the, anyone serious about the market really has to do, um, first of all, you've got to take the plunge. You can't plan everything. You've got to realize there's going to be an element of uncertainty and risk. So I, I would say that first of all. Um, secondly, I think the emphasis on relationships is so much more important there. Yeah. Uh, we, we were talking before about the, the digitization of relationships. Yeah. And it, it's, it's great to get back to meeting people. Yeah. But it's not always essential if, if business needs to get done. And, uh, and I think in, in Asia, in Thailand in particular, the relationship, it, it, it's business critical. Yeah. Um, so uh, having those stakeholder relationships uh, is, is going to be vital and building the relationships and maybe dampening the or tempering, I'd say, the expectations about how quick things can move until those relationships are in place is, is probably what I would uh, I would teach myself 10 years ago as it were yeah um yeah the the subtle of knowing which battles to pick i think are also quite important uh i mean we actually rlc has a a coach that we use who's a professor of cultural uh studies uh very intelligent guy and and he talks about uh, reading the air uh <laughs> you know it's a highly contextual yeah. communication style whereas the british style tends to be a little bit more direct you know we yeah. say it as we see yeah. um not quite american but getting there um and yeah being able to read things and understand the context of what's not being said as well it's yeah. is, is pretty critical yeah and uh, you know we've all noticed that you know during the pandemic you know obviously like you said we talked about the digital side of things before and uh, you know things being on you know teams and zooms and you know the you know, Cornwall chamber of commerce you know we're a very uh, business orientated networking organization you know where you know, we like that face to face, you know, uh, you know, there's going to be some people coming out of this pandemic thinking, you know, uh, shall I go to these low events or shall I carry on doing teams? You know, and we look at it as, here at the chamber as we need to get back to that face to face. You know, it's, I think, you know, it was great to have teams and Zoom to keep the business up and running, you know, during, during the pandemic, but now you're getting back face to face and doing those, those, having those conversations we used to have before would be, will, will be fantastic. And, uh, you know, Going back to the, you know, to the Brexit and tr transition. And uh, I know there's a lot of companies who've contacted the chamber, you know, since probably September of last year, right through to when transition was happening, you know, uh, in January there, have struggled, you know, to get back into the export market. And I think having somebody like you on board, you know, who, who can ask those questions. And this is why we took on somebody to do international trade for us as well, because, you know, we can't answer all, all those questions questions which were asked but this guy from international trade can because he's he's an expert in that field and having somebody like you as well where we can contact and say look what can we do for thailand you know what how can we get the, you know that product like you know flex x for example or iso spaces into thailand 
is, is a fantastic uh, news for us. Absolutely, so absolutely. I appreciate and you coming down here today. No, just, appreciate it. I just wish we could be doing some social events, but we're still a little <laughs> bit off of that. Uh, I think the, uh, the the benefit of a couple of glasses of wine in relationship building is is also very, very uh, oh, un- yes. intangible. But, yeah. uh, you know, some of the best deals are done in that yeah. way. <laughs> oh, definitely. I've done a few of those myself. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, you know, that's, that's great to know. And uh, so what are some of the pitfalls to avoid when approaching business in Southeast Asia? I think what I would probably say is uh, understanding that you can't just copy and paste uh, it is probably right up there. Um, just because it worked for you here, it doesn't mean it's going to work there. Yeah. And Thailand is different to Vietnam and Vietnam is different to Indonesia and yeah. nothing is like Singapore. Nope. That's probably a bit more like London than it is Cornwall. But, yeah. uh, you know, you, you've got the, the sort of differences that go on. And uh, I think choosing knowledgeable partners um, for business is a game changer. So understanding tax, finance, employment law, um, supply chains, market opportunities um, can be the, the difference between a, 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 a staggering success or a rapid failure. Um, a lot of companies therefore use joint ventures or distribution partners to enter the market yeah. and really reduce the, the risk. I mean, it's it's going to obviously impact on bottom line, but you know, if they, I would encourage them to get in touch. I mean, our, our partner company in, in Thailand. We, we work with a company called Tractors Asia that advise on a lot of these sort of things um, about foreign direct investment, how to, you know, match businesses. And, uh, you know, they, they're really, really helpful. And there's those type of companies that I would advise people to really speak to and, you know, get advice. But ultimately, you've got to take a plunge. Yeah. And obviously, going through you, Richard, as well, will be handy as well. So, I mean, having your contact details. So if you're a business out there looking to connect with, uh, you know, Thailand, uh, at least get in touch with us at the chamber. We can put you in touch with Richard. Richard can then look at all the different organisations. You know, you're looking at tax or you know any documentation, whatever, whatever, whatever it takes, whatever you need. You know, we've got somebody now we can contact uh, to get that information for you. So thank you for that, Richard. So um, how do you identify local talent in a developing market? How do you do that? Well, I'm not going to give you all the secrets. <laughs> uh, that's that's the first thing. Um, I, look, it, it, it takes a while. I mean, the, uh, the, the just just to lay things out, I mean, I, I don't fully understand the UK recruitment market. Um, it seems to me pretty easy here, but uh, yeah, I'm, I'm not going <laughs> to disrespect my no. my fellow colleagues. Um, I mean, just to give you an example, LinkedIn, yes. uh, which is a, a platform everyone's familiar with, and I think yeah. a lot of recruiters will use as a prevalent one, um, that will have in the UK something like a 95% penetration rate. In Thailand, it's less than 5%. So if you think you're just going to go on there and play around and find a, you know, a couple of candidates, hey, you might do, but you're fishing in a very small pool, um, especially when it comes to uh, a working population where 35% are still in agriculture. Yeah. Okay. And this is very basic level agriculture, nothing like what we have over here for the right. most part. Um, and the, the mix in of the language skills, uh, Thailand is still relatively low ranked uh, in English uh, competency. Okay. So you need someone who can get through that barrier. Some of them might be intimidated culturally by, uh, you know, uh, an approach from uh, multinational businesses. Right. And, uh, you know, so there's a, there's a little bit of warming up and massaging. Sorry, yeah. excuse the pun, but uh, that <laughs> might be needed. Um, um, but having said that, when you find the talent, Thailand is absolutely abundant in some areas of uh, particularly engineering, manufacturing, supply chain. Um, uh, you know, and there is a lot of skill sets there. We've had leading multinational businesses for, you know, two generations now. Um, and that is really helping to develop talent, to develop further talent. So it's becoming a generational thing. Um, I'd say the other key is probably building relationships with institutions. Yeah. Um, so a lot of the uh, local technical colleges, universities are very keen to help their students get into great companies. So uh, I know companies like BMW, Bosch uh, are doing great things with, uh, you know, the, the chambers and, and with their local businesses as well to, to get that going. So again, there is things happening. Um, but of course, partnering with a reputable recruitment business with over a decade's experience <laughs> and success in a local market would obviously be my first recommendation. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> um, and before, before we finish today, can you tell us a little bit about Bristol West and what, you know, the event you've got running there coming up very shortly? Ah, uh, yeah. So, um, I, I'm very lucky, uh, to, uh, to have been connected to Barbara Hollyhead and uh, a couple of the guys over at Business West who, uh, with the Department of International Trade have, uh, asked us to present, and I say us, um, the topic will be on business opportunities 
opportunities in Southeast Asia with a focus on Thailand. The event will be happening this Monday, so not a great deal of notice, but it's September the 6th at yep. 2 p.m. till 3.15, I yep. believe. Um, and I'm uh, really lucky to be uh, supported there with uh, a couple of my uh, great partners, um, a guy called Chris Parsons, who's yep. the regional VP of Lumentum International, um, a leading photonics manufacturer. Uh, and uh, Mr. Russell Pang, who is the Managing Director for Thailand and Emerging Markets for Siva Logistics, part of CME. Um, so yeah, some really powerful speakers there and what they're trying to uh, communicate is going to be a real case study of how they've done things. How did their businesses get uh, you know, to success and uh, between us, hopefully we'll, we'll come up with a few good ideas for, yeah. for people out there. Oh, fantastic. And just to finish off, you know, what are the, you know, if, if a business approached us now and wanted to do some business with Thailand, what are the three key things you would say to them to get started? Um, I mean, obviously contact the chamber first, um, yeah. you know, there's a lot of expertise there and, and those guys have a good network into people. Um, I, I think depending on the nature of the business, uh, you could also contact uh, organizations like the BOI, uh, the Board of Investment Thailand. They've got offices in the UK. Um, yeah. Also the Eastern Economic, Eastern Economic Corridor, the EEC, um, who do have, uh, you know, really, really strong support for businesses that are interested in that. Um, Beyond that, I would say that, again, there are companies in uh, supply chain uh, and foreign direct uh, investment consultancy who could also be consulted. Uh, but, you know, I'd go to the, the chambers in the first place, the government yeah. back to organizations who are, you know, going to be yeah. uh, having some networks on the ground that you can tap into uh, without, you know, charging a huge upfront fees <laughs> for the, the, the privilege. Yeah. Um, of course, I'm open if anybody wants to contact me directly um i will leave my contact details yep. on the podcast somehow someone <laughs> yeah. will show me how to do that and uh, we we can uh, we can feel free to get in touch with me yeah brilliant and uh, you know i'd just like to say you know there's 53 other chambers you know across the country here who uh, deal with export and import uh, documentation as well obviously we're part of the british chambers of commerce so you know it's all all above board here and uh, if again you want to get in contact you know with richard uh, please get in contact with cornwall chamber of commerce either speak to myself darren buckley or uh, we've got a guy called virgil savin who's our international trade guy at uh, cornwall chamber of commerce head office there so uh, well thank you today richard for uh, coming along and speaking to us and spending you know i know you're down here on a bit of a fun time a bit of a holiday sort of thing and you've seen some beautiful places and you're staying in charles down there which is a lovely location so uh, i wish you you know a, a very safe journey back home again but you know enjoy the rest of cornwall it is the place to be and uh, I'm, I'm very enthused about cornwall i want to see cornwall succeed i want to see businesses succeed and uh, thanks again, Richard. Really appreciate your time today. No Thank problem. You. Thanks for having me. Um, and uh, yeah, really excited to hear about all the great things Cornwall's got going on in AI, robotics, aviation, um, aerospace, um, astrophysics. I know, uh, geothermal, lithium, <laughs> you know, all, all these, you know, the wave hub, you know, we've got so many things right. going on in Cornwall. Cornwall is the place to be. Obviously, we had the G7 here this, this year as well, which put us on the, you know, the global uh, uh, market there as well so people who are aware of us now here in Cornwall this little tiny little county you know the bottom of uh, England and uh, but, uh, well, I'm proud to be uh, part Cornish because I've been down here 35 years but uh, this Mancunian accent but uh, I love Cornwall I want to see it do really well but uh, again thanks for today Richard and thank you to uh, Cornwall Channel for letting us do this po podcast thanks thank sir. you